What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squid back in another Squid video. We are going to talk about some cards that you guys have to pick up. You know, it's that time of month again when we're actually getting some new releases in the upcoming Horizon, including Valiant Smashers, which is a side set that apparently no one knows is coming out. But okay, guys, you have to pick up these cards in time for this pack's release, as well as the upcoming Fire King Structure Deck release in December. Let's take a look. All right, diving right in for the cards you guys should pick up immediately. Starting at the top, Cosmic Blazer Dragon. This card is actually playable. Now, before you guys call me crazy, you're probably thinking, well, Squiddy, this card is not good. This card requires a Tuner Synchro Monster plus two or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters. Well, it just happens to be that the upcoming side set Valiant Smashers includes an archetype called Censure Ion, which can make use of this card in tandem with Crimson Dragon. And how that works is, well, they abuse level 12 synchros, and the main level 12 synchro in their in-engine theme happens to be a generic level 12 synchro monster for once. You can actually make this with one tuner plus one or more non-tuner monsters. So it's very easily accessible for a level 12 synchro monster. And then on the consecutive turn, you can actually make an easy Crimson Dragon to use the effect to either go into Archfiend Calamity King or better yet, Cosmic Blazer Dragon, who happens to be an Omni Negate. Now, there are a lot of instances where you will be actually going into this card over Calamity Dragon for the sheer fact that Calamity actually is very easily interrupted. And the fact that this card is a optional when you can trigger, it means that anytime your opponent exercises their turn player priority to use a quick play spell card, for example, like a Book of Moon or a card like Forbidden Chalice, perhaps, that means that if you respond with Crimson Dragon to try and bring out Calamities, Calamities will actually miss timing. So in that case, it's a lot better to actually summon out the Cosmic Blazer Dragon, who is just a generic Omni Negate monster with a huge whopping attack and defense. So this card can also negate summons, which is another thing that, you know, cards like Baron de Fleur actually cannot do. So if your opponent tries to make something big without going into uh, something that can be activated, they can just swing over your Baron, right? But now with Cosmic Blazer Dragon, that's not going to happen. So that's why this card sitting at around 5 to $7, I think is a great pickup. It only has one printing. So that means that people will start buying this out as soon as Centurions get announced and spoiled. Now we all know this deck is in the horizon and it's decently good in the OCG. So I think in the TCG, it'll be good as well. Next card is another level 12 Synchro Monster. Surprise, surprise. We're just going through all of the Synchro 12 monsters that are easily made off of Crimson Dragon now because that's the go-to with the Searcher Ion cards. Red Supernova Dragon is a counterpart to Cosmic Blazer Dragon. Not nearly as good, but still has 4,000 attack. This monster says that it can actually not be destroyed by opponent's card effects. But in addition to that, once per turn when your opponent's monster effect is activated or when an opponent's monster declares an attack, quick effect, you can activate this effect banish this card and also banish all cards your opponent controls and then during your next end phase after this card was banished by its own effect you resurrect it you special summon it back so this card is just like a board wipe a board nuke of epic proportions that is definitely an option i'm just looking through all of these synchro 12 toolbox cards and i think this one is a definitely good one to pick up specifically an ultra rare because it has been reprinted in the structure deck as a super rare but that means that people will want the original blinged out version of this card and the fact that it's playable in two decks in the jack Atlas Red Dragon deck, as well as the Central Island deck, means that I definitely think it's something you should pick up at least one copy of so that you have a max rarity version. Next is another level 12 synchro, and that's actually Super Heavy Samurai Brave Master Awo, which is sitting at about 25 cents. This card is so cheap, but this is another option that you can actually go into off of directly synchroing, obviously, because he's a generic level 12, or just going into it via the Crimson Dragon play. And that just enables the possibility of drawing until you have three cards in hand. So it's definitely a nice recursion option, as well as being able to attack in defense mode with 4,000 attack. These guys all seem to share 4,000 attack and defense for some reason, level 12s. And then the next card is, of course, as we mentioned, Crimson Dragon. This card is very, very powerful. Why is this card only $15? It's playable in Manadium, and it's also going to be playable in Central Ion. It's one of the main key combos. Actually, guys, off one card in that deck, you can actually make a Calamity Lock, which is absolutely insane. Central Ion Tradea, which is coming out, uh, this card allows you to basically set up the generic in engine level 12 as well as a crimson dragon on your opponent's turn so you can then tag out to summon the level 12 of your choice so crimson dragon is actually one of the big ones that i think you guys should definitely pick up at least one copy of wow it's only 15 dollars because it will definitely go up in price for those of you big ballers out there definitely pick up the qcr one because that one actually looks really really pretty with the gold lettering specifically i think for this card it actually looks really really nice with the gold that's in the artwork 
Next, let's talk about more cards that are actually relevant because of Sentry Ions, which seems to be the only playable uh, archetype out of the side set. You know, like usually there are more, but uh, at least from what I've seen, this deck is actually decently good. So Gizmek Orochi, why this card? Well, this is a level eight extender. And in that deck, the thing you have to know with Sentry Ions is they actually have level four tuner monsters that you would pair with a level eight, which happens to also be an engine. But again, having better level eight synchro or uh, extenders to go into our synchros is definitely something that we want to emphasize. And the fact that Gizmek is a free card that you can summon out of your graveyard is especially relevant. Why? Because they're actually getting a new field spell in Centurion called Stand Up Centurion, which says you discard a card to place a Centurion monster from your deck to your face up spell or trap zone. And all of these monsters, for you guys that don't know, special summon themselves out during the main phase while they're treated as a continuous trap card, meaning you can do it both on your turn and your opponent's turn. So the fact that we have to discard a card to enable that makes it really easy. Sending a card like Gizmek, who actually gains value by being able to special summon himself back as a level eight body means that we're able to instantly place a level four onto the spell trap zone, summon her out with her effect, Primera's effect, get a search, and then we bring back Gizmak and instantly go into Legatea, which is really, really nice. So I think this card is a whopping $15 for the collector's rare, which is really, really cheap. Like guys, for a collector's rare, it's only 15. I know the market is like imploding right now because of the 25th anniversary set, but for me, like $15 for a decently played card that's good in like a lot of decks, it's, it's decent, it's playable, you know? Like, so the fact that it's only 15 for a CR, I think is a great deal right now. You guys should definitely pick it up. And not to, not to mention that you actually play Horus. Some builds of the Central Island deck actually play the Horus engine in the OCG. So having the ability to send it off a King Sarcophagus is also nice because then you can instantly resurrect one of the Horuses and go into a XYZ level eight. So that's another reason I actually think Gizmek Orochi is actually a very, very slept on card right now. So guys, pick this card up. Next is Ghost Ogre. This happens to be a decent card against, well, you know, existing decks like Pyrrhali, but specifically against Central Ion, it's very, very powerful because a lot of their cards activate in the Spiral Trap Zone while they're treated as a trap card, meaning you can chain the effect of Ghost Ogre to actually wipe out any of these effects that try to resurrect themselves from the Spiral Trap Zone, as well as their main extender play off of Stand Up Centurion, which is a on-field spell card that you can instantly Ghost Ogre to get rid of. So it's just really, really nice to have the option there. And I think Ghost Ogre is so cheap right now. It's one of those cards that come in and out of the format. So it's definitely something you should have. Uh, if you want to blink out your copies right now, it's a good time to do so because they are very, very cheap. Next, let's talk about Less Centurion and, well, Fire Formation Dinky. This is a really, really powerful card because the Fire King Structure deck is coming out in December. Guys, no one is seemingly paying attention to the OCG, but Fire Kings happen to be one of the better decks in the meta right now. It's at least a tier 1.5, if not a tier 1 deck in that uh, atmosphere because of the fact that they can now set up multiple interruptions and blow up your opponent's cards using powerful XYZ plays like Arunix Entity, which they can actually summon during your opponent's turn, in addition to other cards like Fire King, Avartar, Avarta, which we already have, you know, he negates monster effects. This deck is now seemingly good, and Tanky actually searches Arvada as well as the other Beast Warriors, so that's really, really important. Important. And the ultimate rare specifically is so cheap right now. I really like can't believe it's only $70. This card is a type of card to be over $100 easily whenever it's playable. It's a generic Rota. That's crazy. Like the for Beast Warriors, right? So I think this card will actually get bought out as we come closer to the end of the month and people realize, hey, Fire Kings are actually decently good. Let's pick this up. Next, let's also talk about cards that you guys should pick up because of Fire King. Ida, the Fire Charmer or Blaze. This card that everyone should have one copy. Now, there is actually a Starlight Rare that's only 200 right now. I don't know how it fell that much. I guess people were scared that they're going to reprint it in the quarter century rare. But I think 200 for a Starlight Rare Charmer that happens to be playable against Fire Kings, against the Rescue Ace deck. There are a lot of good fire decks right now. Seemingly, Konami just likes playing with fire. We're getting a new card in January in Phantom Nightmare, I believe, called Bonfire, which allows you to search... Uh, any, well, pyro monster. So that allows a lot of pyro decks to flourish. Actually, I don't know what set this kind of card is in. I don't, it's in like AC04. So guys, like, let me know what set this is coming on the TCG. But I still think he is going to be very, very good. We are also getting another link monster called Promethean Princess Bestower of Flames, which is actually a generic link three fire monster in Phantom Nightmare that is really, really powerful. 
she gets to resurrect any fire monster from your graveyard. Unfortunately, her on-field effect says that you're restricted to special summoning except for fire monsters. So that's just really easy to get rid of. If we're playing Hida, we can just link her off immediately and turn off that restriction and continue to play. Hida is just very, very powerful and it happens to be a waifu card. So waifu cards like this always go up in price, guys. So if you if you have like the funds, definitely pick up at least a common, you know, super rare version to look nice. And then if you have the mega funds, just get the Starlight Rare. And then the last card that we really quickly talk about, My Body is a Shield, specifically the DT Baryon. This is only about five bucks right now. This card is very, very powerful. Why? Well, this stops a lot of the Fire King plays off the top of my head. I don't know all the combos, so don't call me crazy if this card doesn't actually get as much play as it should. But I think the minute a pro player or a YouTuber actually hypes this card up, it will see a potential rise and buyout. And the fact that dual terminal version of this looks mega nice. Guys, the only other holo printings of this are in gold rare, and that card looks a abysmal it's super ugly so don't get that but instead get the dt one the shatter foil looks mega nice it's also out of a very old dt set so that means it is very very scarce already and the fact that this card says pay 1500 life points negate the activation of a card when your opponent activates that would destroy a monsters on the field and the nice thing about fire kings is they actually like to destroy cards on the field whether that be their own card to extend or your card so this card has a dual utility in my body the shield because it doesn't specify which monster would be destroyed. It could also work for your opponent's monsters trying to destroy their own monsters, right? So this is really, really nice. You can use it in response to their field spell when they're trying to nuke something from orbit on the field. And then in response by paying 1500, you negate and destroy that card. So it's really, really nice uh, that it does that. And on top of all of that, this card is actually somewhat playable in order formats like Edison. I have seen some players signing it. I don't know why specifically, but there are some things that actually destroy in that uh, format. So this card, I think is just a very, very nice card that is very nice to have. Again, quick play spell cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! are the strongest type of cards in the game except for monsters. You know, like spell cards, trap cards, quick play spell cards are amazing. They're some of the most prominent board breakers because you can use them at any time, right? You know, you're immune to things like anti-spell fragments, you're immune to a lot of things because you can just chain them. So that's the nice thing about my body as a shield. Cards like this will actually see play at some point during the metagame, depending on what the decks are. If there's a deck that always likes to destroy stuff, then this card will see a lot of play, right? It's like Forbidden Chalice, Forbidden Droplet, Econ, all these quick play spell cards. So this is one card I think you guys should already have a play set of if you don't have it already, because down the line it will be playable and potentially right now for Fire Kings, this is definitely a good option. Uh, again, the DT version, if you guys can, if not, just pick up commons because this card is just eternally nice. So that's all I had for this quick video. If you guys have any other cards that you think will actually go up, let us know in the comments below. Other than that, we'll see you all in the next video and bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in.